Hey witches, Tiffany here. Today we're going to talk about the runes. I wanna go over a few different techniques in which you can use them for divination, how you can include them in your spell work, and of course, how to charge your own set, since charging your runes is usually a little bit different than charging other divination tools. I am not, however, going to go over the meanings of the runes in this particular video, only because they are pretty complex, just like tarot. And so for you to get the full understanding of each rune with the, the cultural context under which they were originally created, I want to put some decent time into that, so I'm going to be doing a full series, one video for every rune, that will be coming out over the next several, several weeks. If you're really not interested in runes, don't worry about it. I'm only going to be releasing those on Wednesdays, and Sundays will still be various other topics. I will be linking each of the rune videos down below in the uh, description box, but I'll of course also create a full playlist just for the runes. I'm also going to give you a very quick, quick, short little summary on the history of the runes. Nothing too in-depth, but it's always useful information. Okay, let's begin. The runes are actually a 24-letter sacred ancient alphabet called Elder Futhark that was used in ancient northern Europe by the Norse and other Germanic peoples prior to, you know, when they started adopting in the Latin alphabet. Now, the reason this is referred to as a sacred alphabet as opposed to just your regular everyday alphabet is because not only were the letters used to, you know, create words for communication and writing, but they also each had their own spiritual and sacred significance and meaning. That, of course, right there is what differentiates it from something like the traditional Latin alphabet, used for English and Spanish and several, several other languages. This alphabet did change and adapt both over time, but also when you had different groups of nomadic people moving around and, you know, spreading it to different regions, different places would sort of adapt the style of the alphabet, but Elder Futhark is typically the, the classic style that you're going to find runes in. As you probably already know, they can be used in on talismans, on amulets, in spell work, and for divination. And historically, they were often carved into belt buckles, sword hilts, brooches, jewelry, and memorial stones. I'm sure a bunch of other stuff too, but you get the idea. According to mythology, Odin actually went and sacrificed himself in order to obtain and learn the mysteries of the runes. So even looking back into this mythology, you see that runes have always been magical, not just in granting the ability to communicate, but each one represents a powerful force. And that representation, that symbol allows you the power to influence those forces that they symbolize. So let's get on to how to charge your runes. When I say charge your runes, I don't just mean like charge them up with power, you know, put them under the full moon, but I mean, you are actually imbibing them with your own spirit and your own trust. A lot of people choose to use tag locks in this ritual, but if you're not comfortable with bodily fluids, whether that's blood or saliva, it's totally okay. But you do want to take the time to build a connection and a trust with your runes. So another thing that is not a requirement, but it is a good idea is to do this on a Wednesday because that day is associated with Odin. And of course, like I already said, Odin is the one who brought us the runes. And you can also invoke him if you feel comfortable with that. So if you are interested in using a tag lock with your runes, what you would want to do is take a bit of paint and mix in a little bit of your blood or saliva. And you will, of course, be going over, you know, the runes that you either bought or you carved yourself. Uh, this was just like a, a quick little set that I bought for myself that I've been working with for a while. I do plan on making my own, which I'm pretty excited about, but I haven't found the right wood chips that I'm, little wood pieces that I, I want to use for them yet. If your runes are like, like super pretty little stones and you don't want to paint over the paint that's already there or you don't really want to put you know some bodily fluids onto your runes that's totally fine just skip right over that step so here's what you're gonna do you're gonna take each of your runes one by one and go through this process you'll take your rune and you are going to draw the rune on your forehead and just sit there and meditate with this specific tile, with this specific rune. I want you to get a very, very strong visualization of it in your mind and murmur its name out loud to it as you sit with it and visualize it. When you feel you're ready, go ahead and paint over that rune. 
And like I said, if you're not doing that part, just skip to the next step. You should say this while you're painting it, but if you're not painting it, you can simply do this while you're meditating and just say aloud to the rune. I do this as an offering and to create a link so that this rune may speak truth to me and just take a moment to charge it up. You can choose to hold your rune either between the palms of your hands, right against your heart or against your forehead. It's whatever you, where you feel the most bonding connection with it. And then I want you to speak aloud to it. You're going to say, I name you Degas. I breathe life into your meaning. To you, this name I fasten. As I will it, so shall it be. So the finisher, as I will it, so shall it be. That's my personal sign off. Some people like to say thank you, so mode it be. Whatever your words of choice are. And then I like to actually breathe onto it, but I think, you know, speaking to it, really just connecting with it is the most important part. You don't have to literally breathe life in, towards it, into it. And then that's it. That first one is charged up. Now just remember there are 24 to a set, so you're gonna have to do that 24 times. If you did choose to paint it, you can always add like a sealant over that just to keep it from chipping away. That's only going to seal in the tag lock. Don't worry, it's not going to like block it off from, you know, communicating. Now when it comes to my bag of runes, I like to keep a little stick of selenite in here. And the reason for that is because A, it's going to keep it cleansed. So so, you know, in between each of my questions that gives it a quick little, like a, like a little reset for it. And then the other thing is selenite is also associated with communication and with clarity. And I think those are, you know, really great correspondences to have kind of keeping my rooms consistently powered up. Before we get to how to use these in divination, let's talk about how you can use them in spell work. Because like I said, each one can be used to incite or draw up the uh, power Power and the force which it which it represents. All you really need to do is just make sure that as you're using them, you're doing it with purpose and you are visualizing and using intention as you are placing your room. So a few examples is to just use them mixed in with mundane items as a magic sigil. So Fehu, for instance, is universally known as the wealth rune. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but it is going to be your wealth room. So that one you might want to paint onto your wallet. Ansu's is a great one for inspiration. Write it inside your notebook if you're a writer or in your sketchbook if you're an artist. You could also paint them or cross stitch them or just draw them and hang them up inside of your home. Use them on your altar. Anytime you're doing candle magic, you can carve one of the runes or multiple runes into the actual candle as part of your spell. Or if you're not working with candles, you can always anoint your forehead by, you know, drawing the rune on your forehead in oil or maybe moon water or new moon water before you do your spell. If you have a piece of jewelry that you want to charge up with a particular intention, you can paint it or carve it into that piece of jewelry and, you know, just, just charge it up. So when you wear that item, you're, you know, manifesting that force or that power that that rune represents that you are intentionally charging that piece of jewelry with. Drizzle honey into your tea or milk into your coffee in the morning, though in the shape of the rune that you want to imbue your day with. I'll stop right there because you guys probably get the idea. You just have to get a little bit creative with them and you can use them in so many different aspects of your spell work and in your life. Let's get on to using them for divination. Just like how tarot has, you know, a hundred million infinite possibilities of ways that you can lay out your spread, Runes are very similar. There are lots of ways that you can use your runes for divination, so I'm just going to get you started with a few methods. How you do it kind of depends on if you just want something simple, like maybe you just want to see how your day is going to go, or maybe you want something a little bit more complex, like a full question. So therefore, you'll want to use more than just one rune. And it'll also depend on the type of question that you have. So just feel it out and play with them. That's really what I encourage you to do. The more you play with your runes, the more you're gonna get to know one another, and you'll start to feel out, you know, instinctively you'll know what type of divination technique is required for your particular question. So before you do any kind of divination with your runes, you want to kind of make sure to reset them from last time. Like I said, I have a little stick of selenite that goes in there. Uh, some people like to just kind of stick an incense stick in there and wave it around real fast to get some smoke in there. And other people just feel like, oh, if you just shake it up really good, you're gonna kind of disperse that energy from your previous set of questions. So at this point, I would take the selenite out 
and then just hold the bag and think about the question. You can say it out loud, whatever question it is that you want the answer to, basically what you're gonna be asking your runes here. And you're just gonna shake it up really well. These particular tiles are a little bit big and the bag, the bag's not too small for them, but just sometimes shaking it isn't quite enough. So I'll kind of like roll them around in the bag just to kind of move them about, make sure they're all nice and jumbled up. It's just like shuffling your tarot. You might even physically reach in the bag and kind of stir them around. So if you want to know something as simple as how is my day going to go, just again, I'm going to use tarot as a reference a lot here because they are fairly similar. A lot of people do a single card a day tarot read, so it would be the same thing. Just ask how, you know, focus on how is my day going to go as you're shaking it up and then just keep repeating that question, thinking that question, how is my day going to go? How is my day going to go? And then pull out your room. So maybe you like the pulling method, but you have something a little bit more complex that you wanna ask. Well, what you can do is pull, do the same thing, same process of the setup, but you're gonna pull out each rune one by one and lay them out in front of you from left to right as if you're forming one long sentence. If you pull one out, that all you're seeing is a blank side, the actual room side is, you know, you pull it out and that's not what's facing you. That one, you're just gonna set aside and you're not going to include it in that reading. And now, just like with tarot, this takes a little bit of work because you need to define each one, look through each one, both in the context of your question, but also in the context of this sentence structure that you just set up. So again, just like tarot, it takes a little bit of work, a little bit of, you know, interpretation, but with practice, you'll start to intuitively be able to read them fairly easily. You can also do a simple past, present, future poll, where the first one you pull is the past, the next one is going to be the present, and the final one is going to be the future. Again, that one just kind of depends on the context of the question that you're asking. So now let's move on to casting, casting your runes, because those, that is a little bit more of a popular form, and it's going to give you some more interesting and elaborate results. You can just cast them on a flat surface and read them as they fall, or some people like to have a sheet or a map laid out that would have future at the top, present in the middle, and past at the bottom. And you can even just visualize that in your mind. You don't actually need a piece of paper saying, you know, what falls here is in the future, what falls here is in the present. As long as you know about where those groupings are, just make sure that in your mind, as you're asking your question, you're also kind of formulating how you want your answer to land. If you don't don't care about how the past links up to your current predicament, then don't worry about the past, present, and future. Just do a full cast. So what you're going to do is dump out all of your runes, just straight out. If you are using stones, make sure it's not on a glass surface. And again, any that are upside down, just discard those from the pile. You're not going to read those at all. And I do recommend when you do this, you have a pen and paper with you because it can get a little bit complex because not only are you going to look at each of the runes individually, but you're going to look at the small groupings of wherever they've all kind of clustered together, but also the entire thing as a whole. Think of it in terms of each rune is a word, each small cluster is a sentence, and the entire thing is one paragraph. And so you need all of those to kind of work together in order to truly understand and decipher the answer that you're getting from them. Another thing that you want to keep in mind is whether or not you are going to be reading reversals because, I mean, just like with tarot, sometimes you get a card flipped upside down. Well, sometimes you get a rune flipped up upside down or it's sideways. If you aren't comfortable with, you know, adding that definition on top of all the other ones, you don't have to worry about trying to decipher those if you don't want to. Some people just choose to take the rune at face value and not bother with figuring out the meaning of any sort of Merc stave or a reversed rune. And that's perfectly okay. Just make sure that when you're casting them, you, you kind of have that intention in the back of your mind because you don't want your runes to cast a certain way 
not aware that you're going to just kind of dismiss those and you know have it end up being misinterpreted. I will go deeper into this in the individual uh, definition videos, but when it comes to reading reversals, yes, sometimes it does mean the exact opposite or the negative of whatever that rune usually interprets, sometimes, but not always. You have to keep in mind that each one of these natural forces that the runes represent are neutral ground. So they have positive aspects, but they also have negative aspects. So to say when it's right side up, that's positive, and when it's upside down, that's negative is not quite accurate. So as you're working through reading what you've cast, consider multiple variations of what a reversed or mark stay rune may, may mean. Because yes, it might mean the exact opposite, but it could also just give you a slightly more nuanced perspective. But those individual ones should make more sense as you're slowly interpreting everything together as a whole. Because if you're reading your runes and you're going, wait a minute, the, the opposite of this rune doesn't make sense here. It's almost, it, it'll start to read like, like an incoherent sentence, then you know that you're misinterpreting that. Like I said, runes are very complex. So in the coming weeks, all of my videos on the runes and on the meanings of each of the individual runes will be coming out every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Videos on other subjects will be coming out on Sundays at 7 a.m. And of course, this is all Pacific Standard Time. In the meantime, if you have any questions about this video, please leave them in the comments below. And if you have not already joined our little community here at bewitching.bemused, please hit that subscribe button and then click the little bell so you get a uh, notifications when a new video comes out. If you need anything, I am very easy to get a hold of either by email or Instagram. Or just follow me on Instagram just because I'm trying to be better about posting, but I'm not. I'm not very good about it. But hey, that's kind of a plus if you don't want somebody just like blowing up your feed with five posts a day. Trust me, I won't do that. I struggle to get five posts in a month. That's all for now, which is I will see you all later.